Ladies and gentlemen, CES 2015 has come and gone, and despite the fact there's not an official announcement of the GTX 960, we we kind of know what's inside of it. So if you want GTX 960 news, we could be covering that as well as some comments from Nvidia's Jen Husun Huang, um, who was discussing uh, discussing I'm sorry the Tegra X1. But we're going to be starting with the 960 first because I have a feeling many of you are going to be interested in it. There's an article linked in the video description if you want some die shots and you want some other bits and bobs which are related to the card. Uh, because we just don't really want to put leaked stuff in a video for obvious reasons. Anyway, moving on. So, the 960 would appear to be using a 128-bit memory interface with a 2GB frame buffer. Now, the 2GB might also release 4 gigabyte variants. In fact, it's very likely from what we're hearing, but for launch anyway, which, just for your FYI, is supposedly the NDA is going to be released on uh, January the 15th, so not too long away, a couple of weeks. Um, you know, 2 gigabytes, if you're running 1080p screen and you're not overloading with high levels of anti-aliasing, theoretically, it will be okay. Um, but certain games are starting to push that VRAM up a bit. For example, if you want fade, um, fade touch quality with Dragon Age Inquisition and other titles, to be honest with you now, the PS4 and Xbox One are out, PCs can really start cranking up that texture quality, and thus, obviously, with improvements in lighting and all of the other jargon that you'd expect, you can start seeing the, that VRAM usage goes up. Um, you can even see that just by running, say, GPU-Z. 2 gigabytes is probably going to be okay for 1080p, as I've mentioned, but if you're planning on SLIing the cards, um, particularly for higher resolutions, let's say 1440p, then you probably want the 4 gigabyte models, as you can imagine. The real news here is that it is pretty much confirmed to be 128 bit. Now, 128 bit isn't bad um, with the memory clock, which is from what we can see from the manufacturer's listings, which have been pulled, unfortunately, from the cards. We have grabbed some images and linked to some sources on the website. But the core clock of the memory is going to be 7,010 megahertz. You could do the math uh, by, of course, timing 100, times 128 bit with 7,010. And that math will give you 112 gigabytes per second of memory bandwidth which isn't quite as much maybe as you'd hoped for, but do remember the, the Maxwell architecture is more efficient with memory bandwidth than the Kepler. So whether that's going to be enough for SLI purposes for, say, 1440p, it's unknown. But let's wait, I guess, on that one anyway. So what about the actual core itself? Well, we certainly don't know all of the details because, unfortunately, a lot of it is still speculation. But we do know that the core clock is in the region of 1200 MHz. I say region because core clock varies, obviously, based upon the manufacturers. We're seeing some at around 1170 MHz and a couple that are around 1220, 1230 but obviously this is not being confirmed by NVIDIA, but this is what the leaks you can see, you know, from Australian retailers and a few other retailers around the web are showing us. Like, And unfortunately, as I said, a lot of these have been pulled now. Moving forward, the amount of CUDA cores are not listed. Um, and with that, of course, we don't really know the number of ROPs. We don't know TMUs and so forth. What we can probably guess based on looking at the general hierarchy of NVIDIA cards, for example, the GTX 980 to the 970, or say the 780 to the 770 to the 760, and so on and so forth, we can probably guess that this is going to have 1024 to 1280 CUDA cores, which isn't bad. It should provide enough of a grunt to probably put it around the level of the GTX 770 in terms of raw performance. Of course, this will depend, as you can imagine, on factors such as the resolution that you're playing in, uh, the type of game, and, well, dozens of other different factors, really. But if it's around the GTX 770 levels of performance, particularly if you can SLI them, this could be a pretty good card. Unfortunately, we don't know the pricing yet. There have been some placeholder pricing in Australian dollars that we're seeing popping up, but how accurate that is, who the hell knows? We're seeing 421 uh, Australian dollars, but 
Whether that's accurate, whether that's going to be the final pricing, it's unknown. We're also hearing a few rumors on forums and just generally the the cards have made the way into some customers hands or at the very least some people are testing them you might recall that this there's been a couple of linked benchmarks several times over now but once again the accuracy of those who knows but to be totally honest with you so moving away from the gtx 960 for a moment let's discuss the well the tegra Tegra, of course, is NVIDIA's um, attempt to start pushing towards the mobile market. And as we all know, that's quite a um, lucrative market. So the Tegra X1 is based on the company's energy-efficient Maxwell desktop GPU. And according to Zhen uh, Hassan um, Huang, I'm pronouncing that probably quite incorrectly, but still... Um, it's still the exact same GPU as the desktop part. The X1 has 256 CUDA, CUDA cores and 8 CPU cores. Remember, it's an amalgamation of a GPU and a CPU. And he pointed out that it handles 4K video at 60 Hz, which is pretty nice. And he goes on to boast that, and I quote, there's nothing like it in the world. Well, obviously, he's going to say that. I'm sure many of you will remember the Elemental demo, and in fact, if you check on the front page of um, our YouTube, that's youtube.com slash redgamingtech, we have, of course, shown comparisons versus the PlayStation 4 and, PS and PC version. But he says, and I quote, that the Unreal Engine used to consume about 300 watts of power a couple, about two and a half years ago. So this was like on a high-end GPU. Uh, I believe, if memory serves, they were running a GTX 680 on that. Don't quote me, but I think they were running a GTX 680. I don't remember the CPU. I think it was an i7-3770K, or maybe a 2600K. I'm not sure. But anyway, let's put it this way. It took a lot of juice to run it. But now... It shrank to 100 watts, so about a year ago, it shrank to 100 watts when they were running on the Xbox One. Now, um, it's running at just 10 watts for the Tegra X1. Now, there's two points that we've got to remember. Um, first of all, I don't quite know why he mentioned the Xbox One, because it's using AMD's architecture, but whatever. But the primary point is that well, the visual fidelity and the frame rate are obviously going to be reduced. Like, you can run the same game. For example, your cousin might have a PC that's running, just for example, you know, a GTX 740. And yeah, he can run the same games for the most part as you, but the quality is going to obviously be vastly reduced. And that's just pretty much part and parcel of it. So, you can kind of figure out what the performance of the GPU is going to be for the X1 by simply taking 256 CUDA cores and then comparing it to, let's say, the 960, which will be a good course of comparison if it does have uh, a thousand or so. But it's pretty impressive because let's just be totally blunt here. The very fact that you can run the Elemental demo, which is pretty taxing, there's a lot of lighting in that. Um, the very fact you can run that with albeit reduced frame rate and quality, but the fact is it can still run. Now remember the original Tegra, when it was released, it was running, um, and NVIDIA kind of boasted the fact that it had the same G-flop performance as the Xbox 360 in terms of raw G-flops. Now obviously that's not to say that it was 100% exact and we they were only referring to the GPU portion of this, not the CPU, because remember the Xbox 360 and the PS3's uh, CPUs were pretty beastly. Um, the Xbox 360 of course was using a tri-core uh, power PC processor which could handle two uh, threads per core and the, well, the PS3 of course was using Cell which was had the SPE and the SPU units where of course the main core could handle uh, two threads and then you've got the SPEs which could handle I believe six or seven for the PS3 memory is a bit fuzzy today so it basically what I'm saying it was quite a beast but in terms of the raw GPU power um, the Tegra was roughly kind of equal to them and that's very impressive considering at the end of the day it's a mobile device now of course we're moving on to the next chapter and so theoretically 
this this sucker should be very powerful um, just 10 watts of power is really important because as many of you know it's there's a couple of factors which are reducing mobile gaming at the moment in terms of the performance one of them is power consumption and the second is being able to basically fit everything into a tiny space which kind of goes hand in hand but anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video um, it's been a bit of an interesting day today, as some of you probably will be aware just by looking at the way the video intro started and so on. Um, we're going to be making some further changes over the next X days. I say X because I'm not certain how long it's going to take. But there's going to be some major changes to the video production and so forth on the channel. So hopefully you'll stick with me. But um, as I said, if you need more information on a GTX 960, it is linked in the video description. And for now, I will bid you farewell. And as normal, if you could rate, comment, subscribe, provide internet hugs, I shall be mighty appreciative. Anyway, take care. Bye for now.